All right, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wahav, Akar, Kodash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. And he write reverence and honors to the apostles that are in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved with him these last days all right this lesson i wasn't too sure what i was going to name it right but the main thing is what the doctrine right this lesson is going to be called you know what we're going to call this let thy words be the same right let thy words be the same. Be steadfast in that understanding and let thy words be the same. Don't change it. There's a saying in the world, even though we're not of the world. If it's, don't, if it's not broken, why try to fix it? The doctrine remains the same. Let's go to 2 Peter 2 and 1. The scripture said there'd be false prophets that would do these things. Let's go to first what? 2 Peter's? 1 Peter, 2 Peter's chapter. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be what false teachers among you. So these things would happen. It was written that these things would happen. Who privily, secretly, stealthily, they snuck up in the truth, shall bring him damnable heresies. So damnable, what is that acquainted to? Destruction. Heresies. So you were going to have men teaching wayward doctrines, which was going to lead to what? Their destruction. That's why it's called damnable heresies. Go into the word heresy. What's a heresy? Something that's outside of the scriptures. Alright. Quickly type that in. See what comes up. Okay. The doctrines of the so-called church. Something that's universally accepted. Okay. And a heretic is someone that breaks off, basically, that breaks off from what they've been taught. The faith. Right? Who shall privily bring in damnable heresies, even the nine the Lord Jehovah that bought them. So when you're teaching damnable heresies, that means you're denying the Lord Jehovah Shai. Because Jehovah Shai, he had a doctrine, which, yes, it was his father's, but he gave it to Jehovah Shai. And he gave it to particular men that are upon earth. And many shall follow their pernicious. And that word pernicious in destructive ways. Right? Ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feign words. Okay. So then feign words are what? Enticing words. False words. Lies. Make merchandise of you. So this is what's going on right now. Right? And that's why Yahabashah got the whipping on them. When they were in the temple. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. And their damnation slumbereth not. Okay? That's, this is how serious this truth is. Son of man. Born Ezekiel 13 and 12. Make sure I'm on the right one. 13 and 2. What am I talking about? O oh, son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear the word, hear ye the word of the Lord, you have a shine. So you've got individuals, they're prophesying out of their own hearts, out of their own mind. Right? Out of their own opinion. Thou saith the Lord power, woe unto you foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing so we don't follow our own spirit we follow the spirit of Yahweh of Shai. right that's why the scripture says don't trust in your own heart let's go to Proverbs 3 and 5 so you've got prophets they follow their own mind and what does the scripture say about that in Jeremiah 17 and 9 the, the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful who can know it and that's why you get men they join different camps why because something they didn't like 
according to their feelings or their emotions and they end up joining the camp that could get them destroyed okay proverbs 3 and like i said i'm not against camps at all so i just want to throw that out there let's go to proverbs 3 and 5 trust in the lord you have with all thy heart all not some that's how you're directed in the right way and lean not unto thy own understanding moment we do that that's when we make what silly ass mistakes all we, need, all, all we need to do is trust in the Lord you have with all our heart. And he's going to deal with the rest. And lean not unto that own understanding. A man that leans unto his own understanding, what's he going to do? He's more liable to lean on his what? His opinion. Okay? We ain't got time for an opinion. So now we're going to go to... Titus 3 and 10 get straight to the point. All right, this is Titus 3 and straight to verse 9. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions. And the foolish questions are what to cause confusion, right? It's basically straw men arguments, okay? And contention and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain, right? So they're not going to do you what no good. A man that is a heretic, and you've got many a heretics, you bump into heretics every single day. A heretic is someone that makes up his own little doctrine, his own way of life, right? And when you type in that word heretic, it says one who holds a doctrine at variance with the established or dominant standards. So what would be that established and dominant standards? The scriptures, the doctrine, what Yahusha taught us, what Paul was also teaching, which it was the same doctrine of what Yahusha. So anything against what we've been taught is against Yahusha. That would be deemed as what a heretic. So if a man says, oh, this is my opinion and... Risen and starts butchering the scriptures, you know that man's off. Okay. Another word, a miscreant, a heathen, an unbeliever, a non-Christian, he's an infidel. Basically a pagan. And it also says a bugger. <laughs> okay. What else? Buggery, like a beast, because that's what you become. If you're not walking in the doctrine of Yahweh, you are as a beast. So a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition, because you may warn this individual, you may even warn them. Okay, and if they don't stop, they're going to be destroyed. Right? And it all ties down to opinion and emotion. That's why in this truth, emotions are dangerous. Nothing's wrong, because men, even men, the mightiest of men have emotions. King David had emotions. Yahweh had emotions. But you can't let that get in the way of the truth, of the doctrine. The moment you do that, you're in very, very, very deep waters. That's why you have shows looking for men. That's why he said, blessed are those that are not offended in me. You've got to believe in all the scriptures. That's why the scriptures in Ezekiel 4 or 3 eat the whole roll. All of it. Because if you eat in the whole roll, at least you know what the, what the scriptures consist of. What it says. So after the second admonition, you've warned this individual that, bro, what are you doing? You reject. You don't go back and forth. Knowing that he that is such is subverted, right? His mind has been subverted. Going back to what Timothy's, a seducing spirit, has, has this individual. And sinneth being condemned of himself. Why? Because he didn't want to stick to the words. He wanted to make up his own thing. And heretics, they follow what? Tenants. What makes them feel good? That's why when you go to Timothy's, it says there'd be some that what have itching ears. Itching ears. They want to hear things that feel good, that fits them, that fits their little criteria. Okay. In other words, they want to put the scriptures in a little box, in their little box, which they're living in, their little paradigm. You can't be that way. Right? That's what a heretic is. Right? He, fo he follows 
particular worldly tenets, a group that follows their own doctrine. So I always say, if someone's saying, well, if someone's got dreadlocks and you've got a camp there cool with you having dreadlocks, what do you think that individual's going to do? Nine times out of ten. Follow the camp that has dreadlocks that don't tell you you should not you should not have dreadlocks. These are heretics. These are seducing spirits. Right? An individual that's worldly that might not have a, enough time to, to teach his truth. He's going to join a camp that's like worldly, half-assed. So that's what a heretic is that does things according to their own opinion, their own mind. So you reject him. After the second admonition, you reject him. Let's go to Romans 16 and 18. This is Romans 16 and 18. For they that are such serve not our Lord. Let's go to verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, Mark Rem, Scopeo, which caused divisions and offences contrary to the doctrine. Because it's contrary. Alright? So if it's contrary to the doctrine, that means you're contrary to your Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, which you have learned and avoid. Man. So you shouldn't be teaming up with someone that's outside of the scriptures. Because that's what it really means to be outside of the body. You're not teaching the right thing. That's what it means to be outside of the body. Okay, for they are for they that are such of not our Lord Jehovah shall wash out by their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. That's what they were set up to do. That's why you have false prophets. That's why you what pray for discernment. And those that were simple that get deceived, well, it was it was for them to be deceived. Okay, is there anything else? You really shut off on this Ecclesiasticus chapter five and ten. Be steadfast in that understanding. Right? Go into that word steadfast. Secure in position. Steady. Firm in its place. Because you understand the scriptures. So no one should be able to come up to you and you're like. Uh, you know. There may be certain things that are asked to you. And you may say. Well I haven't quite looked into that. I want to look it in. That's something else. Right? But when it comes to example. The 12 tribes charm. You should have that down packed. You should have that down packed. Someone asks you about that, you should be able to say, well, it's in the scriptures. Go to Ezekiel. About the stick. Right? If anyone's asking you about, well, how do you know um the one you call Yahweh How do you know he was dark skin? Go to Revelations 1, what, and 10 and 12 on down. Right? It's about being steadfast in what we've been taught and believing. Be steadfast in our understanding. So what we understand, we want to be steadfast in it. It's one thing to know, but do you believe? And do you understand? A lot of men, they still have doubts about particular things within the doctrine. They still have doubts. <laughs> I don't doubt the scriptures because the scriptures are faithful and true. Be steadfast in our understanding and let thy word be the same. So it shouldn't change. It shouldn't change at all. Okay, so when we do these lessons, it's the same thing, same precepts, nothing has changed. Okay, so with this lesson, I hope this was edifying, and until the next time, shout out to the hopeful elect. Shout out.